And good evening Peter from Richard Vancouver, Canada. Annie Bermond. Final medals to be awarded tonight at the World Figure Skating Championships. Canada once again shut out from the podium in the women's ranks, but a big night nonetheless for a couple of Canadian women, including Annie Belmar, who begins the night in 21st place. with Tracy Wilson. I'm Rod Black. Welcome everybody to our coverage here on CTV of the Worlds. Annie's music, Red Lilies, Crimson and Bright. She has seven triple jumps planned. Watch the entrance to her triple sal cow off a spread eagle. A little more difficult entrance here. Nice start. <laughs> Annie's most difficult jump and the one she nailed in the short program the triple lutz here it comes double this being annie's first worlds it has been a nerve rattling experience in vancouver this week So a big night tonight for Annie Belmar and for the other Canadian Jennifer Robinson with pressure on. Big night here though for two nations, the United States and Russia. The battle on, final night of competition at the Worlds.
DTV Sports proudly presents coverage of the 2001 World Figure Skating Championships from General Motors Place in Vancouver. And hi again, everybody. Welcome to CTV's coverage of the Worlds. I'm Dave Randorf, and this is it, our final night from Vancouver, and we are expecting a big show for the grand finale, the Ladies Free Skate. If you were with us last night, the Ladies Shore program was nothing short of spectacular. The entire final flight skated clean, setting up what should be a real battle tonight on the GM Place ice. The main story continues to be, can American Michelle Kwan retain her world title, or will Russia's Irina Slutskaya win her first world championship? Kwan won her first world in 1996 in Edmonton and since then she's won every second year since then and that is obviously a pattern she would like to break tonight they say this is a friendly rivalry but I'm thinking the friendship will be put on hold at least for one evening that's what we have on tap for you two more hours of coverage right here in prime time for their thoughts and the ladies free let's send you back to Rod and Tracy well, thank you, Dave. Before we get to the free, let's talk about the fallout from last night's uh, dance competition. I know your ears are probably still ringing after a dance panel that judged it like an Indy 500 where no cars passed. It, it was a joke. Well, it was, and we've tried to track down the referees. They will not talk to us until the entire competition is over. But remember, the ice dance is a different entity. It's an entity unto itself. We've seen great judging in the pairs and the singles competitions, and we can expect more of the same in the ladies tonight. Well, it might come down to who's carrying the most momentum. If it's that, Arena Slitskaya does right now. She definitely is on a roll. Technically, she has the most difficult routine, and because of that, she's leading after the short program. She's a lovely jumper and has made great strides because of her triple-triple combination. I haven't seen her land any triple-triples here at the World Championships in practice or in competition. Michelle Kwan has. She did a triple-triple in the qualifying round, and she is the artist. If Irina Slutskaya is not on technically, then Michelle Kwan will edge her out with the presentation marks because if it is close in the long program, the tie goes to the one with the highest presentation marks. So there are really three stories here today. Tonight, the battle for gold, the fight for bronze, and if Jennifer Robinson can move up three places so Canada can send two women to next winter's Olympics. Fumea Suguri will skate on CTV tonight. So will the Italian Silvia Fontana, Ves Vanessa Guzmaroli, and then Sarah Hughes, Angela Nikodinov. She, they're all both in the battle for bronze. Victoria Volchkova also there. Buterskaya may be an outside shot for the podium, but look out for Kwan and Slitskaya here tonight. Now the marks for Annie Belmar. A lot of controversy before these World Championships about who should have joined Jennifer Robinson, whether it should have been Annie or Nicole Watt. Hindsight, of course, is 2020. Annie hardly rose here at the Worlds. That was the best free skate I've seen her have this year. Uh, she landed three out of seven triple jumps. The question is, have they put her out on the world stage too soon? Annie is a lovely jumper. And you can see when she jumps well, she jumps beautifully. Four, nine, but she has four, not four, developed four, the nerves to be able to do the jumps in competition, and that's going to take time. Now will Jennifer Robinson hold her nerves when we come back to the Worlds? Predator represents Canada. Jennifer Robinson. The magic number is 28. Annie Belmar is placing, no matter where she finishes, gives Canada maximum points for Annie of 16. And that means Jennifer must finish 12th or higher in order for Canada to secure two spots to the Winter Olympic Games. So right now, Jennifer has to take three steps forward, or Canadian women will take one step back. difficult jumps, the flip and the lutz in competition in the short and long. She has not landed them in this competition. That is essential if she is to move up. Her best jump, triple loop. Here comes 
or triple lutz. Again, a two-foot landing. Didn't fully rotate the jump. Triple toe, two foot. her triple flip if she lands it it can help her a lot yes we saw how fierce the competition is in the ladies short program one more shot at her most difficult jump, the triple lot. Yes, good for her. That's experience that allows her to focus, miss the jump the first time, regroup, and land the second one. It hasn't been the greatest week for Canadian women. Now an agonizing wait for Jennifer Robinson to see if some of those skaters ahead of her will fall down. We'll be back. We welcome you back live to Vancouver. The women's free skate at the Worlds. And it looks like Jennifer Robinson and Annie Belmar, who skated earlier tonight, we just showed you their performances, will finish in the exact spot they began the night. In 15 and 21, it doesn't add up the math, and that means Canada will send one and woman to the Winter Japan. Olympic Games in Salt Lake Ultimate City. Ready. That is a setback for Canada. And now to the stories of the night. Of course, the final flight will feature the three Americans and three Russians. Fumea Suguri, in the minds of many here, should have been in that final flight. She started out in the more difficult qualifying round, and you remember the short program, everybody sk skated cleanly, including Fumia, and she was lost in the shuffle a little bit. She begins the night in eighth place, coming off a four continents championship win in Salt Lake City. Her music is Jupiter from the planet. I like everything about her skating, particularly her flow and speed. Watch her triple lutz to open. Combination with a double toe.
now into her triple flip. Toe slipped on the takeoff. That was a double. at the World Championship, but last year she struggled all year with ligament injuries in both of her feet. She is still skating through pain this year, but has limited her training. Nice triple toe. And what a performance she put on at the recent Four Continents, where she won the title. skating really has grown in leaps and bounds the leaps of course the jumps but probably the bounds the presentation the second mark has really elevated the last couple of years when she has limited her training it has been mostly her jumps and so she spent more time concentrating on the edge work the pure skating technique and her spins Umiya Suguri at the Worlds. Her best finish, an 18th and 97. She was 20th two years ago. She'll have a much better time this time around. And the marks for Umiya Suguri, these marks will put her into first place, albeit temporarily. Umiya is a skater, skater, because she, her edges are so pure. She skates with a lot of flow, and she has the complete package of the spins, the jumps. Lovely to watch, not her best skate of the season. She was much stronger in the qualifying round, but again, a good set of presentation marks. Luck of the draw, though. You get drawn in a qualifying pool, and then you have to fight, 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 and that's what Mumea has had to do. But she will certainly have her best ever performance at a world championship right here in Vancouver. Our next her goal was to be Italy. in the top 10. Sylvia She's assured of that. The woman who has had the best reactions after her skates this week in qualifying and the short program has been Italy's Sylvia Fontana. She begins the night in 10th place.
Sylvia's personality really shines through on the ice. It's very musical. This to Andrea Bocelli's time to say goodbye. Here's her triple Lutz. Triple Lutz, double toe. Often when you watch skaters compete, they have such an expression, you, you feel like they're not having any fun out there, and it's nice to watch Sylvia and see a skater enjoying themselves. She goes again. Some come here to win the gold medal, and others come here for their personal best. For Sylvia Fontana, that is what this week has been about. The defending world champion is in the building. Later, Michelle Kwan on ice at the Worlds. Back to General Motors Place in Vancouver. Sylvia Fontana of Italy, who is also the girlfriend of American Pairs skater, John Zimmerman. A musical and entertaining program by Sylvia. Again, her weakness is her jump. She does not have perfectly clean takeoffs and landings of her jumps, and the judges have a video replay so they can see, they can zero back in and check the takeoff and the landing. So that's why her technical marks were a little bit lower. Look at these presentation marks. Hey, if you're not having fun, if it isn't fun out there, what is it? Good for her. That is her gold medal right there, isn't it? Getting into the top 10 at the Worlds. Our next skater represents France. 
Vanessa Guzmaroli. And a couple of years ago, Vanessa Guzmaroli of France realized her dream of making it to the podium. It was 1997. A year later, she fell to 16th. Last year, she was fourth in the world. And Vanessa Guzmaroli comes into tonight in seventh place. very unsuccessful year in competition this year so she has gone back to the same free program that she used at worlds in Nice to music legends of the fall watch her life great height she is a terrific athlete former water ski champion in her homeland doubling her triple flip. And going right into her triple loop. Again a double. back in this routine triple flip there touch down with the second foot though on the landing the worlds now Tracy are so different than they used to be with the qualifying round having to skate two free skates during the week it can be good for some skaters it can be bad for others best for the consistent, well-trained skaters. Will she be able to keep her seventh place showing up? We'll find out when we get the marks for Vanessa Guzmaroli at the 2001 Worlds on CTV. Against Russia. And the skaters you have seen tonight are trying to position themselves for placement. Medals out of the question. 
Well, the first set of marks will be low for Vanessa. She opened with a huge triple lut, double toe combination. She also landed a triple sal cow, but that was about it in the way of triple jumps. She'll get higher marks, though, for her presentation because of her Enerbowers and spread eagles, spirals, good spin. If you're just joining us, Canada will not send two women to the Winter Olympic Games in Salt Lake City. Jennifer Robinson unable to move up a couple of places, the three she needed. Annie Belmar will be finishing in 21st place. Vanessa Guzmaroli. Her worlds are complete. She's currently second behind Fumea. Here's Dave Randorf. Annie Belmar, you know that it was a hot topic for a while there. Who would get the second spot to go to the Worlds, yourself or Nicole Watt? You won that spot. Did you feel any extra pressure coming in to justify that decision? Not at all. I just, um, I knew if they made that decision is because they wanted me to go. Um, I, it, I don't, I wasn't feeling pressure at all. Like, I, I just wanted to come here and skate well and do my job. And I didn't really think about that all week. You and I have, have talked at different points through the season that uh, you battle the nerves inside. Uh, what do you take from this experience? What did you learn about that, that battle of the nerves here? Um, the first program was really hard, uh, really, really stressful. I think the most of stress I felt this year. Um, so I really tried to focus in the next program, and I did it really well in the shorts. It's really under my knees, the best I've ever felt. And it was at world, so I mean, <laughs> could have been better. So, uh, and for the long today, I was a bit, I was fine. I, was, I had a great warm up. Even in my program, I was all there, you know, I, I didn't, I was, it wasn't going too fast. I could think every thing, so it didn't come out as well as I wanted to, but it was still not bad, and I'm really pleased with that. Well, that's good. Have a great off-season, and we will see you next season, Annie. Thank you. Thank you very much. In a moment, we'll talk with Jennifer Robinson, Michelle Kwan, the three-time Women's World Champion, getting ready for her world's free skate. Colgate winning smiles were everywhere this week in Vancouver. No matter how she skates, Jennifer Robinson always manages to smile. It was a silver smile for the top Russian pair, Elena and Anton. While Born and Kratz were just happy to lay down a great skate here at home. With the men, Evgeny Plashenko had the smile of a newly crowned world champion. It was silver for the French team, Anasina and Pezera. But gold for Italy, Fusarpoli and Morgalio, and they know how to smile. American Michelle Kwan heads into tonight's free skate, smiling. And Canada's sweethearts, Jamie and David, they've not been able to stop smiling since winning it all. Irina Slutskaya, can she win her first world title up against Michelle Kwan? Jennifer Robinson will finish 15th. She caught up with Dave Randorf a little earlier. Jennifer Robinson, we spoke at the beginning of the week. You were so confident coming into this competition. You had a good experience to draw upon from last year. Where did it go wrong? Um, well, I think the whole entire week, I thought I did a pretty good job. Uh, I mean, in the competition, there were some pretty high degree of errors, but... Uh, Bearing that in mind, the whole week was a positive. I still maintained my confidence through the entire thing. I think where I lost a bit of confidence, which is only natural, is on the flip in the short program. I was happy with how the week started. Very disappointed with the short, so sometimes it's a little hard to rebound from that. I thought I fought through that whole performance, which is a, a nice kind of way to end the week, whereas in the past I probably would have probably given up. And I don't like to say that, but that's how I used to be. And, it was a good fight out there, and I thought I did a pretty valiant effort out there. I was happy with that. Well, uh, best of luck in the offseason, and we will speak to you uh, next season. Thanks, Jennifer. Thank you. Coming up, youngest woman in the field, 15-year-old Sarah Hughes could be podium-bound in Vancouver. 22-year-old Irina Slutskaya has two world silver medals already to her credit. She'll go for her first world title tonight, and this being a pre-Olympic year, it takes on even more significance because in the last four Winter Olympic Games, no lady has won the gold there without having won the worlds the previous year. And you can bet that stat is not lost on Irina Slutskaya.
when I be small, when I went, sorry, <laughs> you know, when I go to practice or competition, you know, I'm like, everything is easy, you know, nothing here, nobody knows you, you know, but after a couple of years, you go on the ice and thinking, oh, European champion, world silver medalist, everyone, you know, think you must skate great, and you start skate great, you know, and when you start skate great, try to skate great, nothing, nothing. And when you know bodies, I think it's easy. Earlier on, everything seemed easy to Irina. She's a two-time world junior champion. In 1996, she made history as the first Russian woman to win Europeans. And in 98, climbed her way to number two in the world. The golden child of Russia was not prepared for what lay ahead. That year, she lost her edge and failed to make the world team. I feel so bad, you know, because I was second at the world, and next year I doesn't go to Europe and the world. Of course, I think, oh, my career is finished, I think, first time. But later, I think, why? I'm a young girl, you know, I'm not an old woman, you know. I can't start, you know, with the uh, beginning, right? Irina committed herself to making the 2000 world team, even after critics ruled her out. The comments, sometimes harsh, only fueled her to succeed. I hear just, she's so fat, she can jump, she can do anything. You know, all newspapers like, Irina Slutskaya, she doesn't skate more because, okay, people write everything so bad, you know. And uh, I think, no, it's not me, you know. <laughs> I don't want to listen to this. Irina continued to train in Moscow with longtime coach Jana Gromova. She also enlisted the help of a sports psychologist, and the results were instant. With her skating back on track, there was one other area in her life that was about to change. Irina tied the knot. I meet him and I say, hi. <laughs> He's like, hi, Anne. After we go walk together and fall in love. <laughs> Home is Irina's oasis from skating. She keeps mementos from fans close at hand. Everywhere toy. I love it. As Russia's comeback kid, Irina is now leading the way in her sport, executing jumps in combination that give her the upper hand over the competition. All skating might change. I changed maybe jump. I changed my choreography. When uh, I look at the tapes with my skin, I see different, you know. It's like new people, new girls skating. <laughs> the new girl is this girl, Irina Slitskaya, against her friend and rival, Michelle Kwan. Final flight tonight, final flight at the 2001 Worlds. What an order. Uh, keep in mind, this has been drawn. A random draw. Three Americans, then three Russians, and the battle for gold is right in the middle. Michelle Kwan and Irina Slutskaya. Tracy Wilson. Interesting, after the short program, the number of skaters who talked about the effect that the audience had on them. Michelle Kwan said, I just felt energized by the audience, and she felt it was one of her finest performances. And the crowd is a buzz right now as these skaters are getting ready to take the ice. And an interesting draw because Michelle, who is the artist, against Irina, who is the athlete. And that triple, triple factor we've talked about, the combination, how much risk will Michelle put in because she's skating in front of Irina? Michelle, uh, never, she nev never leaves it to the last minute. She knows going in, it doesn't, it doesn't matter what anybody else is doing. She has her game plan, and that's what she does. She has one uh, triple triple combination planned it's coming up second in the program but I, uh, Irina Slitskaya is the type of skater who will add combinations all over the place that was a shot from the US Nationals by the way <laughs> Sarah Hughes Angela Nikodinov and Michelle Kwan that was the podium and there's Irina Slitskaya camera left to their right boy she has really come around in the last couple of years there's Victoria Volchkova coming on the ice. She's also in it. And the final skater tonight will be the oldest skater in the field, 28-year-old Maria Butruskaya. But Russia's hopes rest with Irina tonight. They rest on her and just how many triples and 
if she will do any triple triple combinations as i said earlier we haven't seen them here at the world championships she really has been rebuilt hasn't she she, when she's skating well, she skates with such a joy. It's so refreshing. Her jumps have a lot of spring and height. Higher jumps than Michelle Kwan has. Sarah Hughes, youngest competitor, will skate first. The other story right now is who will take the bronze medal here. Sarah Hughes certainly in the thick of it. 15 years of age. Her third world championships, and there's Maria Butraskaya at 28 years of age. Very interesting field. Maria has um, had trouble with her jumps in this competition and actually is quite lucky to have made it to the final flight. And her only chance, her only chance, it's a very deep outside shot at the podium, is if all of those other skaters in that third, fourth, and fifth rung have some serious, serious trouble. The math, though, is Michelle Kwan against Irina Slitskaya for gold. Now, oddly enough, this is an odd year, so if you are into numerology, it's not going to be a good year for Michelle Kwan because she's won every even year. And here is Victoria Volchkova. Victoria is a lovely jumper. You saw it in the short program. Watch her height on her jumps, a natural spring. 18-year-old, has been to two world championships, once 10th, once 6th. And here is Angela Nikodinov, who begins the night in third place after a great short program. What an exceptional short program from all of the women. From all of them, and what an exceptional year for Angela Nikodinov. Last year at the U.S. Nationals, one of the commentators watching her long program said, Oh, gosh, this is so uninteresting. You might as well go to the refrigerator for something to eat. Well, many skaters, a comment like that would have crushed, but Angela rose to the occasion. She's reinvented herself. Beautiful, graceful. She's in third place. Folks, don't go anywhere. Don't go to your fridge. Stay, in, stay on your couch. Don't turn the channel. This is going to be great when we come back to the Worlds. Welcome back to General Motors Place. Very quiet in here, this pro-Canadian crowd. I think this tells you a lot about what the worlds have been about here in Vancouver. Very appreciative of all the skaters, no matter what nation. And that tells you a lot about the knowledge that Canadian skating fans have. Thankfully, the Cold War between the United States and Russia is over. But now we have the ice war in women's skating between Russia and the U.S. And Sarah Hughes will be the first skater here in the final flight. And she actually has some Canadian blood. Her father, John, was born and raised in Canada, used to play for the Toronto Marlboros hockey team, the Marlies, and also played at Cornell University that with Ken Dryden. To her the ice. Often a panicky moment for a skater at the end of the warm-up when you're next on, just getting your skates to feel right. Sarah going through her last-minute adjustments there. She's got some time now as the skaters are leaving the ice. Again, from all of the skaters who skated earlier tonight, this is where we currently are. Fumea Sugari first. Elena Leoshenko of Ukraine second. Vanessa Guzmaroli third. Again, the Canadians Jennifer Robinson and Annie Belmar will finish down the list. Jennifer in 15th, Annie in 21st. And now, the final flight for and medals at the world represents the United States Sarah Hughes and she is talented and wise beyond her years she'll be turning 16 in a month or two but she's already been to two world championships and she's going to take her time before she gets her place on the ice you do have a couple of minutes incredible focus and maturity for a 15 year old owning the moment you can see she's not feeling the pressure of having to get out there she's getting her last minute instructions feel centered coach robin wagner pointing to her stomach and that's where you want to feel any tension right in the center of your body comes into tonight in fourth place very close between her and angela nikodinov she finished fifth at last year's worlds in nice france she will skate to the music don quixote
a very difficult triple-triple combination planned. Triple foul cow. jump and it'll be a clean program yes and as much speed now as when she started the program she's gonna bring the house down here this kid's got the goods <laughs> Making him look so easy, eh? All in the day's work. What a way to get this final flight started. Sarah Hughes of the United States at the world. <sighs> they grow them on trees in the United States, don't they? These teenage skaters. My goodness. Unbelievable composure. She took her time throughout that performance with this triple triple combination there's a triple foul cow has to be in perfect position to do a triple loop the only criticism of sarah hughes jump the landings are not fully rotated they are not entirely clean watch as she comes down she still has a quarter turn on the landing of her jumps now the judges have the instant replay so they will pick that up and that does hurt her had they been clean jumps these would have been up even higher. There is a 5-3. Emily, and happy birthday, Beck. 5-8 technical merits, so there is a bit of a discrepancy between those two judges. Presentation marks. 
Look at that. Some yeah. five eights, five sixes again. High and low, a couple of five fives. So the judges are kind of here and there with Sarah Hughes, but no doubt right now she is the leader in the free skate and at the Worlds with five skaters to come and maybe on the verge of winning a medal. Oh, wow. I think I don't want to watch it. Our next skater represents the United States, Angela Nicodina. <laughs> Nerves of steel, these American women. And here's another, Angela Nicodina. Third after the short program. Could have been a toss-up, really, between Angela and Sarah Hughes. Angela has seen Sarah's marks. Seven clean triple jumps. She knows that the pressure is on. Music Tchaikovsky, Sleeping Beauty. for her. She was right in it with and, Sarah Hughes. And it's like she knew she had it and just started to tighten up and think instead of continuing to skate. What a shame for Angela Nikodinov. How 
how disappointing. Might have even beaten Sarah Hughes. But not this time. The American champion defending world champion next. Along with a furry friend, Angela Nikodinov, had three minutes of near perfection and then blew it. What a beautiful opening. Watch the takeoff on her left. She gets down into the ice, good height. I love the landings of her jump because she has so much speed coming out of her jump. But then she started to overthink it. And here you could see she didn't even get up. She tried to rotate without jumping first. And that turned the corner for her. From there on in, she thought through her program instead of just going on muscle memory. And she knows it. So where will she be in relation to Fumea Suguri? Probably in the free skate. Not in the top two or three. Technical merit marks, 5-3, five, 5-4, five, a 5-5. Five, five. She is, in fact, ranked second in the free skate, just ahead of Suguri, but she is behind Sarah Hughes. Those are good marks. Angela had a lot of flow throughout the program. Judges taking that into consideration, some beautiful spins. The Judges have left a lot of room. They left a lot of room on Sarah Hughes' marks. Presentation marks are better. Even though some of those marks for Sarah looked low, they were first place ordinals. Keeping in mind that the skaters to come have some impressive credentials and tricks. Nikodinov is second. It all started in Canada in 1996. In Edmonton, Michelle Kwan won her first world title. She has won three, wants to make it four, back in Canada again. Her music, Song of the Black Swan. Her triple loop to open. And now Michelle's triple triple combination. Triple toe. Triple toe.
jump left. It's a difficult one, the triple luck. The smile says it all. A skate that could make her a four-time world champion. She could not have skated that any better. Wow. She came to this competition ready and focused every practice. Every portion of the competition skated like a world champion. She may not have had the momentum against Irina Slutskaya the last couple of times they met, but she has it right now. Advantage Kwan Slutskaya is next in Vancouver. Union student ambassador to skating, classy young woman, and maybe world champion again, Michelle Kwan. And here's Michelle's triple triple combination. Two triple toes. And now her triple lutz. She does not have the height in her jumps that Arena Slutskaya has. She had the focus in that program, the artistry. Maybe more focused than we have ever seen her. I agree. It was the perfect balance between focus and fire. She had it, had them both. Let's see the first set of marks. Uh, Judges we'll will give a little room because of Irina Slutskaya next. And you can hear some of the American partisan supporters in the crowd not liking the five sevens. I find it so interesting with the video replay because the judges can actually look at the landings and the takeoffs and really separate these skaters. And now the artistic marks five, for the artist. Five, eight, five, Interesting, eight, there is a second place ordinal. Five, nine, five, and that eight, comes from the Croatian five, judge five, who placed nine, Sarah Hughes ahead of Michelle Kwan. So Michelle will now wait and watch to see if she will capture gold. It's right here, the showdown with Slutskaya. Our next skater represents Russia. Irina Slutskaya. She has beaten Michelle Kwan all season long. Final words. She too will take her time to come to center ice. Like Michelle, she has seven tri triple jumps planned. And like Sarah Hughes, she will skate to the music of Don Quixote. with a triple Lutz double loop combination. If the Lutz feels good, it might be a triple triple.
Do the same for Irina Slutskaya. Her first Lutz was not in combination. That means this one has to be, and that she tried to put a triple jump on again, and then a double. And that's Irina Slutskaya. What a competitor. Pulls the jumps out of nowhere. She's keeping count of her triples. She might do too many. Well, she's having to re-choreograph her program. She had another triple loop plan, but because she did two in combination, she had to take the third one out. Thinking on her feet here. This is Michelle Kwan and Irina Slutskaya. Fun to watch. Unless you're her coach, and then you'd have heart failure because <laughs> you don't know what she's going to do next. What will the judges do? That's next on CTV. Well, earlier this week, she skated the qualifier. She did none of that. All of those combinations, uh, the three jump combinations, that she attempted and landed here in Vancouver tonight could become a world champion, Irina Slutskaya. Well, she didn't do the first plan triple-triple, but she did a whole bunch more. There's the triple loop, slightly shaky on the landing there, but she was still able to do the double. Now let's, let's watch the second one. With a triple loop for your second jump, you have to be in total control on the triple lut. Her second jump, the triple loop, was not fully rotated. Where she will get the edge, though, her spins were faster than Michelle Kwan's. But I thought because she was thinking through her program and kind of making it up as she went, it looked to me like she was thinking it in places where she lost the expression. And she also looked a little slow and ragged at the end. It is going to be so close, but it has come down to the athlete and the artist. Two more skaters to come, but the gold medal will be decided right here with this set of marks. How about the Russians and these new combinations of jumps featuring three jumps, as we saw from Plushenko and now Slutskaya. Second in the world to Michelle Kwan last year. Here we go. Technical merit marks. We have a 5-9. We have a couple of 5-9s. 
five eight five seven in the second set of marks will be the determiner looks like she's getting the edge technically here so will it be the athlete or will it be the artist michelle kwan was so on in her oh my gosh it's close it is close we do have a third place ordinal from michelle but a split panel from some of the judges Litskaya is second and Michelle Kwan, it must be the Canadian ice. Edmonton 96, Vancouver 2001. Four time world champion. Are you entitled to cry? Oh, oh God, it was a hard year. The artist wins. Oh, great. Congratulations. Thank you. Mm. Uh, so now, who will take the bronze? Victoria Volchkova will skate now. Sarah Hughes is third. Irina Slitskaya will win another world silver medal, finishing second to Michelle Kwan. The crowd knows, seeing the standings up on the scoreboard. Here is the 18-year-old Russian. Tracy has gone to the last two world championships. One of the young Russian teenage sensations was 10th two years ago, 6th last year. One of the best jumpers in the competition. She has learned to harness the height that she gets completely. And her, the other area that she has to continue to work on is her artistry. a common denominator for Canadian skating fans who wonder about our women's ranks though between the Russians and Americans they start them young doing triple jumps they do a lot of repetition and there is a downside to these young girls doing all of these jumps many of the young American skaters have hip injuries knee injuries it's the price you pay Triple left. Wow. <laughs> to help her with her artistry, she has been taking from Canadian skater Fedor Andreev, the mom Marina Zueva.
still has some developing to do. Victoria Volchkova will not win a medal here. But will she be near the same place she began the night? One skater to come at the Worlds in Vancouver. You're looking at the new world champion again. Four times defending champion Michelle Kwan. 1997, last time that the Americans had two women on the podium at the Worlds. Tara Lipinski won. Kwan was second. Lipinski and Kwan had the great rivalry of that day. The rivalry today is Slutskaya and Kwan, and Michelle beats Irina in Canada. Victoria Volchkova and then Maria Buterskaya, who would need the skate of her life to try to make it to the podium. She would have to beat Michelle Kwan in the free skate, so unlikely. Great job by Victoria Volchkova, though. She landed seven triple jumps for her. That's quite an accomplishment. Not the finesse of her competitors. Five, 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 seven, five, six. That will be reflected in the second set of. Our presentation. So, Victoria Volchkova. Five, five. Off the podium. Five, five, three. But we'll have a better result, it looks like, than she had a year ago at the Worlds. Right now, she's in fifth place. It all depends on Maria Butruskaya, who is the grand dam of this event. Oldest competitor in the field. Russia. Maria Butruskaya. She would have to beat Michelle Kwan in the free skate in order to make it to the podium, which would mean the performance of her life, even better than the one that won her the world championship in 99. It looks like it will be Michelle Kwan Slitskaya, then Hughes. Buterskaya, final skater tonight. She will skate to music from the Russian movie soundtrack, 17 Moments in Spring. had some interesting training heading into the Worlds. As a matter of fact, with the Moscow Dynamo hockey team. She wanted to prepare herself for dealing with skating in front of a large audience, so she was going out at the beginning of the game and at intermission. They were very successful when she performed. They won their games. a triple foul cow. That was a triple Lutz turned to a double. Her first and only mistake.
and she is adding jump. What a competitor, a real fighter fighting for the landings and adding jumps for the extra marks. What a gutsy skater. Irina Slitskaya. Thought she would have won a world title tonight. Obviously not happy with the result. Maria Buterskaya last to skate. If she finishes second in the free skate, our math was a little off. If she finishes second, she could make it to the podium. She did six clean triple jump. But you know what? She's going to miss it by a placing. She finishes third in the free skate. Technical merit marks plus presentation will be around the same mark. Sarah Hughes, the 15-year-old, soon to be 16, will win the bronze here at the Worlds. Irina Slitskaya, disconsolate with the silver. And Michelle Kwan has done it again. Michelle Kwan has won the gold. Here come the marks for presentation. What a great performance by Maria Butrskaya, the best I've seen her skate all year, and all of these women, they just upped their level and came out fighting tonight. Had she skated better earlier in the week, she would have been among the top three, but she's not. The United States has two medals, including the gold. Michelle Kwan, the queen of the world again at the World Championships. Four different nations win gold medals at the World Championships. Michelle Kwan, world champion for a fourth time. Irina Slutskaya, the silver medal. Sarah Hughes, the bronze. Jennifer Robinson, Annie Belmar. Disappointing night for Canada, but a great night for the United States. Here's Dave. Here we go. Michelle Kwan, four-time world champion, your second one in Canada. You must love it up here. I really love it. I mean, uh, the crowd was amazing. I had a wonderful trip. It's been beautiful in Vancouver. I've been able to walk around. Lost my luggage, so I was able to shop a little. <laughs> and just this tops it off. And, geez, I don't know what to say. It's been an amazing week. They're all special. They're all different. How does this one compare? You're very emotional. Oh, geez, I've had a rough year, a rough start, and... You know, a lot of people doubted me, and it's just, it's been rough because I haven't had enough confidence in my skating, and the last month, Frank and I said, okay, this is, you know, make it or break it, and you just got to go out there and let it all loose. I mean, go for it. Nothing to lose. Well, the confidence shone through tonight. Congratulations. Thank you. We will wrap up a golden week in Canada. Michelle Kwan hopes the pattern continues. The last four world champions going into the Olympics became Olympic gold medalists. Well, time to wrap it up from Vancouver. What a week it has been in this great city. A memorable week and now some lasting reflections from another world. Yes, Vancouver, B.C., recently named the best city in the world, put on one of the best ever shows at the Worlds. A week full of motion, commotion, and emotion that ran deep for everyone who skated. The judges always have the last word, but the skater knows best. When the music stops, the skater always knows whether it was the best he or she ever did or whether it was a bad dream that you wanted to wake up from. It was not a good week to be a gladiator, and we had loads of them. We were gladiatored out. The only skater gladiator that lived up to the name was Alexei Yagudin, who on frozen water won a silver medal on a frozen foot, a conquest more difficult than any of his three world championships. The key word this week, quad. Michelle Kwan got her quad, four gold medals. And Kid Quad. The team king of Yeni Plushenko, quad, triple, double combination, should be called the Plushenko, one of the great skates of all time. If first time is always the best time, we had a week of bests.
from the Italian dancers who gave their country the first ever gold medal at the Worlds. But the week belonged to Canada's dream team, Jamie Saleh, David Pelche. Heartbroken a year ago when they threw a medal away in France. This year, the only thing Jamie threw was a stuffed animal. A new record in the teddy bear toss. And after hearing the anthem and stepping off the podium, there was only one place these two wanted to be. In the arms of the people who skate every performance with them, their parents. David said he wanted to thank his mom, especially for making sure he got his butt to practice when he was a kid. So the moral of the story, if you're a kid in Canada, no matter what sport you play, get your butt to practice. You could become a world champion. What a memorable week in Vancouver. Only in Canada, you say, pity we can't hold the Worlds every year. And imagine what these rivalries are going to do to this sport heading into the Olympic year and building towards the Salt Lake City Olympics. Quite phenomenal what we saw this week in Vancouver. And to wrap it up, here's Dave Randorf. Well, we're done here for now, but be sure to join us next week. This is what you'll see, the Parade of Champions. Just a little glimpse, a little preview of Evgeny Plashenko. And an all hangout. That's next Saturday night on CTV. Our executive producer is Rick Chisholm. Our producer is Doug Walton. Our director is Richard Wells. On behalf of our extremely talented crew here in Vancouver, thanks for watching, everybody.